Uh, let's so show us that, and then let's talk about the rising method that you're using and sure. how that came into being. Where's where's our here's our loaf of dough. Uh huh. There's the dough. This has been rising since last night, and it honestly hasn't risen all that much. It looks fairly it like it kind of looks cooked oh, at this nice. point it's yes. it's formed a skin as it dried out a little bit yes. but you can see it is still dough not bread uh-huh well we're going to throw this in the oven and cook it for about 25 minutes um the the method that i used for this is called a sourdough start and the way that you can get one of those there's two ways right you find someone else who has one and they'll give you a little sample of theirs and then it's like a chia pet you feed it every day with a little bit of wheat and a little bit of water that has no chlorine in it and then you scoop out a little bit and that keeps all the yeast colonies and lactobacteria that are in the sourdough start alive. Let me show you the one that I've got. So this is my sourdough start. It's basically flour and water goo. Um, the thing that makes it special though are the millions of microorganisms living inside here, which are the things making these bubbles right here. As they consume some of the sugar from the grain, they produce bubbles, which makes the bread rise and also helps to ferment it, which chemically changes the bread. So the way that you make this is you either get some from, from me or someone else who gives you a little scoop and that infects your flour and water goo, or you just get some flour, mix some water, and then start treating it as if it was alive. And it will actually get colonized from little yeasts and lactobacteria that are in the air, and also that were initially on the bodies of the grain itself. If you look at the grain super, super closely, you can see that it is alive. So you basically just treat it like it's alive and over a couple of weeks, you'll find that it will start to rise just like bread is supposed to. I do love the fact that in that description for food, you used the word infect. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a strange it's thing. it's true. <laughs> yeah, uh, like biologically processed food, we let them eat part of it so that it becomes better for us to eat. Okay, we've got our cup of wheat, and this right here is a microscope, a digital microscope that plugs into the computer, and it lets us get a really up-close look at the grains. It is really cool. And kind of freaky. And kind of freaky, because... I oh. never want to eat ever <laughs> again. Just keep in mind, the grains are not moving on their own. The microscope is physically pushing them. They're not alive in that sense. Wow. But wait. There's more. Give it to us raw and wriggling. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> it's like sausage. You just don't really want to know how it's made. Nope, nope. I, I'm never eating again. <laughs> yeah, that is a... Oh, oh no! <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> yeah, look at the fuzz on the end of that. I don't want to. If you were to zoom in way further than we're zooming in now, you would actually see that the surface of these grains were covered with tiny microorganisms, including, funny enough, the actual yeast that are best suited and best adapted to break down this particular kind of grain. In other words, the inoculation for rye grain start or rye sourdough start is already on the grains themselves. Just grind them up, add chlorine-free water, and you're basically there. One of the interesting things that happens when you process bread using sourdough is that it actually boosts the amount of vitamin B that's bioavailable after you eat it. This is a big deal because without vitamin B, your body gets a disease called pellagra, which is basically like vitamin B scurvy. The same sort of problem exists if you're eating a diet composed mostly of corn. But the solution that the Native Americans in cultures like Mexico used was actually to boil it in calcium hydroxide. So one culture was using a biological processing, and the other was using a chemical process. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe below. We look forward to seeing you next time.